In Austria's high country, life for many is as it was. Up here, people have made clear, conscious decisions not to change the rhythms of their lives. Upsetting farming families is a sense of threat, that a new nuclear power station in neighbouring Slovakia is dangerous, and that Austria's natural splendour could be covered by another radioactive cloud. Gertie Kohler remembers Chernobyl vividly. Erfahrung haben wir eigentlich mehr mit Tschernobyl gemacht, wo ich eben gerade bei ihr schwanger gewesen bin. Muss auf einmal kosten, jetzt sie dürfen den Salat vom Garten nehmen essen oder die Kinder dürfen im Sand nehmen spülen. Jetzt hat man auch durch, durch diese Angst, dass im Moment sie das Gleiche passiert. Several hundred kilometers away in Slovakia, Mohovsa is big and ugly and certainly not as safe as it should be. It is not the same design as Chernobyl in the Ukraine, the scene of the world's worst nuclear accident 12 years ago. But if the core of Mohovsa's nuclear reactor were even partially to melt, as happened at Chernobyl, then the scale of death would be enormous. The toll from Chernobyl is still uncertain because many cancers from the radiation cloud may not emerge for another five to 15 years. The Austrian capital Vienna is just 180 kilometers from the new Slovak nuclear power station. The distance, though, is irrelevant in terms of Mohovsa and the other older, more dilapidated station called Bohanica being a significant threat to Austria's people and to the country's national security. And the rain came together with the radio radioactive cloud, and this is what causes... Meteorologist Helga Kolb has been assessing what would happen if a radioactive cloud was released in Slovakia. If the wind was directed more towards Vienna, it could also uh, hit Vienna, which would mean that... Uh, that would be catastrophic. That it would be catastrophic, yes. I, I cannot conceive of a situation like that without panic in Vienna. And uh, panic is, is what will make people uh, try to flee the town and this will mean that they will be in the roads, in their cars, which offer practically no protection. Austria is one of the few Western European nations which has forsaken nuclear power as a means of generating electricity. It has the means. The Swettendorf nuclear station was built in the 1970s, but never operated after a national vote. Anti-nuclear sentiment is strong. Austrian farmers are among the most hardline, and Bert Wabra says with good reason. Wenn man zurückdenkt, das Zwentendorf, eines von den modernsten Kernkraftwerke waren überall, wo sie es gebaut haben. Hat es eine Volksabstimmung gegeben, das zweite Dorf ist nicht aufgebaut worden. Und wenn es heute in so Ländern wie, wie jetzt bauen, wo es von Haus aus sagen, vorne aufsperren, schauen, dass es schadhaft ist, nicht und sowas wird aufgebaut, da muss man Angst gehen. In fact, all these years after Chernobyl, there are still regular checks on levels of radioactivity in milk and in mushrooms and in strawberries, as well as on the deer that roam high in the mountains. Austria's agriculture industry is vital to the economy as well as providing an essential element to the fabric of the nation. Back when the Austro-Hungarian Empire ruled much of Europe, the Viennese were used to giving the orders. It was in this city in 1815, after all, that Europe's princes divided the continent. Austria is much shrunken in size and power since then, Though post the Cold War, it's emerged as the commercial centre, linking Western Europe with former Warsaw Pact countries. Now, having gone determinedly non-nuclear, the Austrians are angered that others haven't seen the light. A short paddle down the Danube from Vienna is the Slovak capital Bratislava. 
The old town reflects the grandeur of colonial occupiers, but it's deceptive. Slovakia is desperately poor, even if it's a little better off than the police state that it used to be during 40 years of communist rule. Even so, it's still mired in the economic mistakes of the old regime, particularly a reliance on nuclear power to produce some of the cheapest electricity in Europe. We've been promised a comprehensive tour, and our guide was Robert Holly. You see the shape of the cooling tower, it yeah. resembles jets. Mm -hmm. So this is normal. The cooling towers, 120 metres high, were uncontroversial enough. But then I ventured a question about the seismic stability of the area. The last earthquake, which, uh, which was somewhere around here, was sometimes in 1763, if, if I'm right. And I, I don't want to be difficult about this, but what happens if you get a, an earthquake and it sits on the Richter scale? And you're only built for 5.8? Yeah, that was calculated that, well, everything is possible. But you have a certain prob probability. Well, that's comforting news for Mahofsa's 2,200 employees. The power company, Slovenska Elektrana, rolled out a corporate spokesperson, Rastislav Petrik, to deal with the vital question. Is Mahofsa unsafe? Ah, it's... Uh, I don't think so. The Mahofsa is uh, the safest uh, power station in VVR field. Can you imagine a nuclear accident here? No, no, no. I, I think it's it's safety. You know, there was no accident in this kind of of uh, power stations on the world. If Mahovsa was a Western nuclear station of recent design, safety wouldn't be a critical question. But this is an old Soviet design, the WWER 440-213. They started building it back in 1984, when this was the poorer half of Czechoslovakia. And although big German and French nuclear power companies have been brought in to upgrade it, the basic flaws remain. Before we left Austria, we'd been briefed by Wolfgang Kromp of the Vienna University Institute for Risk Research. Kromp heads an international panel of 32 nuclear experts appointed by the Austrian government to assess Lahovsa up to the day, they did not allow us to, to see the, the safety documentation. On the other hand, they claim reactor pressure is, is safe, it's even the best which has ever produced for a VVR. If it's so, why they should not uh, give us access to the documentation? The pressure vessel, the heart of the Mahofsa nuclear reactor, is Kromp's biggest worry. Are the welded sections strong enough? There is a, a special weldment, it's called the belt line weld, which is exposed to neutron irradiation and uh, subjected to embrittlement during the years of operation. This, uh, this weldment uh, exhibits a strength values, measured strength values, which uh, below the standard and are supposed to be above the standard. But Slovakia's Rostislav Petrik is scornful. The lifeness of this vessel is more uh, is about 40 years. The International Commission, though, has collected evidence which some interpret as meaning that the pressure vessel will become so brittle that it might last only six years. If you have to cool down the vessel, and this is, this is uh, in, in emergency cases done by the core cooling system, the, especially the high pressure core cooling injection system, uh, a lot of cold water will be brought into the vessel and it's, it's, uh, it's now in contact with the hot wa vessel wall, and, and if it comes into this uh, embrittled region of the, of the weldment, it might suddenly break, and then we have the big disaster. You have volatile, volatile uh, contaminants would, would go in the atmosphere, and you have a big, big Chernobyl type of accident. Back in Vienna, the International Atomic Energy Agency has been trying to help defuse the row between Austria and Slovakia. Ostensibly, the IAEA is a nuclear watchdog. In fact, its chief interest is in promoting nuclear energy as the safe ecological option, even in Slovakia. 
Hans Meyer is a 20-year veteran of the UN agency. I think in general the experts' opinion on the safety level of those plants in Mochovce is, is quite good. Uh, everything can be improved, that's true. Uh, and here we also have to try to convince the Austrians that they have to look to their neighbours uh, with a friendly eye. Austrian politics has been dominated by Mohovce. The Chancellor, Viktor Klima, knows that getting tough with the Slovakian Prime Minister, Vladimir Mechia, plays well with the anti-nuclear lobby. There have been government meetings and numerous public protests, but Slovakia has resisted great pressure to stall the start-up of Mohovce. In Slovakia, too, Mahovsa is a political issue. Slovak national elections are due in September and campaigning has begun. Chile and beer, an unfortunate combination for the opposition leader, Mikolaj Zorinda. A summer street fair in Vrable, the town closest to Mahovsa, offers Mr Zorinda the opportunity to pick up a free pair of socks. He's a politician after all, and to wave the flag for his corruption-fighting democratic coalition. Democratic is about the last adjective to describe his opponent, Prime Minister Mechia. But on Mohovsa, there seems to be little to separate them. I am sure that uh, nuclear power station in uh, Mohovsa is uh, a good investment for Slovakia, and everybody in Slovakia knows that uh, the government spent a lot of money for this power station. Mr Zorinda dismisses safety concerns, and on that at least he seems to be on the voters' wavelength. Anti-nuclear campaigners in Slovakia follow the classic international Greenpeace model, create a confrontation and then get arrested. Lubica Trubinova, that's her being lifted up by her arms, directed the Mahovsa event. Oh, it was not so bad. No, no. When, when they were uh, taking me by, by hands and, and feet, it was okay. The, the problem was when they were pulling us uh, by these chains. That was not so nice. The biggest problems of our activities here in Slovakia is the situation with the uh, media, especially with Slovak TV, mm. which is uh, the only state-owned TV. Uh, which completely embargoes all our our um, outputs, media of outputs, and they simply don't uh, don't do anything of of our work. In Slovakia, this is not surprising. Even the commercial broadcast and print media are cowed by the heavy-handed tactics of the government party. The thugs of the security forces are deployed with much more vigor when television cameras are not around. A consequence, even in Bratislava, far from Mohovsa, is the absence of any debate about the nuclear power station on economic fundamentals, let alone questions of safety. The Austrians have one more forum at which to raise their fears about the Slovakia nuclear industry. For the next six months, the Austrian Chancellor, Viktor Klima, has the presidency of the European Union, which theoretically gives him considerable power. Many Bei der Zusammenarbeit mit der Kommission geht es um eine Partnerschaft für die europäischen Werte. He could use it to highlight Wolfgang Kromp's worst-case scenario for a Slovakian nuclear accident. For Austria, Hungary and, and these small countries, we would lose half of the country, maybe. So, so for us, is, this will be the end of the world. Until December, Vienna will be at the centre of European affairs. There'll be conferences and summits and celebratory balls. Up in the mountains, though, the farming families 
aren't expecting any breakthrough in the brawl with Slovakia. The people in Austria can't do anything against it because the people in Slovakia think that's our problem. But I think we can't do anything against it in Austria. There are no winners in this nuclear brinksmanship. Austria can threaten, Slovakia can defy. What's left is hostility and a void. No one can agree how unsafe, how big a threat Mahovsa really is.